Well, hi everybody. Welcome back to the pot again. Uh, we've got a few years off. Really busy at the moment. Um, a few years just passed over. As you know, the hurricane that we had at the weekend. Did a little bit of damage in the, in the main greenhouse, but uh, fortunately you wanted to get up and, and repair some holes before they got, uh, before they got too bad. But uh, saying that, it hasn't been too bad. And now we're, we're back to the usual northeast weather again, pouring down with rain, and it's a little bit chilly tonight. So I'm not going to be up here too long. Uh, the main reason to get this video on the go was to uh, we start the leaks off. Uh, we have entered the shows again. Um, so I'm looking for some nice, good uh, stock leaks for next year. I've been in touch with a few lads online, um, and they, they promised us leaks, so I'm going to be out and about sourcing. I've already gotten a few from my friend, um, Steve, as you know, I was up to his allotment just before the shows. And uh, what I've done down home, I've got the, um, getting my greenhouse sorted out, getting my heat bed, although there's no heat going at the moment, not for leaks. Uh, sitting there nice and quiet, and they're multi, multi sell their trays with a good multi-purpose compost and what I do with mine as I do with most of the things I, I mix uh, two handfuls of multi-purpose compost to one pot really good chop sand and I make it a good really free mixture. The pips went into there uh, from the leak head. I've got two leak heads, uh, one show leak and uh, one plant leak which I'll be entering both in the shows next next year. So I'll, I'll take you through them month by month. So what I've managed to do, I've got, got them down home, got them put in multi-cell trays in there, they're absolutely great, they're up the way, nice and fresh. So I'll take you down there when I finish up here in the allotment and we'll have a little look and uh, my greenhouse down home. So I have got light on there and I have got heat, but none of them will be coming into operation until at least the end of next month. I'm hoping to keep a nice steady temperature of around about 45 to 55. Uh, I'll go up every morning, as soon as I get up, go downstairs and check the temperature. And uh, the lowest we've had this week has been uh, 45, and that's 6 o'clock in the morning. So I'm well pleased with that, well happy with it. Uh, the temperatures do creep up through the day, around over 60, 65. And all I do is just slide it open a little bit, let some fresh air, open the vents, make sure there's plenty of fresh air coming through, and I'm quite happy with that. Um, we've been uh, we've been cracking on here, as you say, we've, we've done the winter cabbages a, a few weeks ago, and uh, I gave them a bit of spray last week with the, uh, the rhubarb juice and it's kept them lovely and clean as I say that they're well on the way there now these are uh, the winter cabbage and um, the fall and they're doing really well they fill the bed out now so there's very little weed to do I have noticed a few little shrub bites on the bottom leaves but uh, I'm quite happy to put up with them uh, for the time being if it does get too bad and then I'll revert to something stronger uh, but for the time being they're just doing fantastic uh, we've cleared We've got the last three plants of the um, of the Elsa Craig up the top there, and there's still some really nice firm tomatoes on there. I've been really pleased with them this year. Um, they're a fantastic cropper, and uh, really worthwhile trying next year. If, you, if you're looking for a good tomato, a good British tomato, then you kind of go past the Elsa Craig. They're all bred for, for growing outside in a shelter position. So, as I mentioned in an earlier video, I'll, um, I'm going to attempt to three plants down home up against my south facing wall and all they'll have is a piece of polythene for the cold of the evenings until they get a good hold. And we'll see how they grow outside. I, I think we'll be yeah, rather surprised. When people say they they kinda grow tomatoes because they haven't got a greenhouse. Well, I think we'll surprise a few of them. But uh, as I say, I've been busy yesterday where I did in the bottom tunnel. We've just been in, weeded it all out, we've got all the spring cabbage in there, fantastic. They're well away. Um, I was in yesterday doing the nettle barrels, giving them a good stir up and it's fantastic. It's just like pea soup. But I'll show you that when we go through there. Um, I clipped all the grapevine back. And what I did do, is to, uh, if you remember I showed you some of the cuttings I took last year. Um, what I did do, I've, I've potted one of them. I've given a couple of, a couple of lads. Um, Chris Whitelaw was down with his friend the other day. And I give him a, um, I give him a vine. Now this is another one of mine. This is last year's vine. And all I've done, I've put it up into this big 10 inch pot. <coughs> and I'm quite happy to sit there. And all I'm going to do with this for this coming year is to, is to make a main branch, take a couple of side shoots from it, and get a couple of bunches of grapes growing on that. And uh, that'll do for this year. We'll maybe find a spot for it in one of the other greenhouses next year. Uh, but for, for the time being, 
I'm quite happy to have it sitting in there and uh, putting a good root ball on. But we'll put that to one side for the time being. I just want to uh, show you around here. Um, as I say, we've, uh, we've cleared this bed off. I had all the um, jalapeno peppers brought down here. Um, we've cleared most of them off. Um, as I say, the leaks that was the last year's cutting. So what I've done this year, if uh, some of the extra uh, canes that were grown, we took them off, and uh, there's a perfect example. You want them about 10 inches long, 8 to 10 inches long pieces, uh, with a slant cut on the top, just above an ice bud, and on the bottom, we'll have a, an ice bud there, and that goes down another 4 inches, and that's a straight cut. Now all I have to do with that is dip it in a little bit of hormone, long, hormone rooting powder, um, once again, multi-purpose compost and good sharp sand, plenty sharp sand in it, half fill a pot, yeah, nice and firm. So I press these canes into the, into the firm compost and then I fill it with gravel at the top. And they'll sit in our all winter. And uh, hopefully next year we'll get another five grapevines. So if anybody's wanting a grapevine next year, well, you know where I am. I always like to, to try and... Uh, use up what we've got, we don't like throwing anything away, so, you know, if we can root it, by all means we'll root it. Um, I'll just pop around here for the time being, um, and show you what's been going on here. This is one of our main, as I say, this is one of our main greenhouses. We try to do a lot of uh, cuttings that in here. Well, these are just some of my um, flowers I brought from down home and emptied the flower beds. Uh, there's a lot of cuttings that I've taken there. Um, geraniums, they're flying away. Begonias, carnations. Uh, there's a few cuttings over here. Um, there's a few friends that there uh, always to know at the school. No doubt they'll be keeping a close eye on them because I, I, I promised them a, a few cuttings. So they're doing really well. But, um, yeah, we're getting there. There's always something to do down here. As I say, the, uh, the begonias, we don't like to throw them out, you know, we like to try and get a little bit of flower from them. Once they've been in the beds at home, and these are the fibrous rooted ones. They're not the combs, so they'll not, um, once they finish flowering, they'll just go out into the, into the compost bins. But, as I say, for now, we're getting a, a little bit of flower from them, so I'm well pleased. Uh, when I did do cut my um, herb beds down home, and we've got some uh, some ivies in the corner, and of course the wife was getting a bit worried because they're starting to overgrow a bit. So what I did, I pulled a couple of good chunks up, and there we are. We've got uh, we've got a good ten new ivies, and they'll be perfect for planting out in the baskets for next year. Make a lovely little show. So as I say, I've thrown nothing away. Geraniums, well they were great. They're, they're easy to root away. Um, and that's a nice deep red one, so I've taken uh, another dozen cuttings of them, so I'll have, uh, I'll have my back on filled up with them next year. Absolutely fantastic. Um, just one more thing to show you where we're in here. Uh, I don't know if you remember the, um, the combs, the, the garlic combs from when I did, the, um, I did a video on them. Well, there you go. There's just one tree of my combs, uh, and they'll sit there quite happy all over the winter. It's just in a multi-purpose multi compost, uh, sharp sand again, and a multi-cell tray, and uh, they're growing away quite easily. There's a lot of people who um, says we're having problems growing these. Well, I'll show you how to, um, how to cut your combs, crack the nuts, take the outer skin off and the inner skin, and just give them a toss around in a little bit of um, yellow sulphur or some... Um, some root and hormone powder, just in an envelope, give them a good shake around and then plant them in a good sharp sand or multi purpose compost in there. There we are, they'll, they'll sit there until next spring and all I'll do with these, I'll put them up in a 9 centimetre pot and they'll sit there right until the end of next year, the end of July I should say, when they'll die back and hopefully they'll get a, we'll get a nice big fat comb from each of these plants and then that in itself will be planted again next year for call it the following year. They're quite easy to grow, uh, a lot of people struggle with them, but um, as I say, if you go back to the other video, um, cracking the nuts, and uh, I'll show you how to how to get on with them. But uh, they're quite easy to grow if you uh, if you take it step by step. 
But uh, God please with them. I'll, as I say, I'll leave them in their trays for a, a couple of weeks yet. I'm not, uh, I'm not going to be, um, I'm not going to be rushed with them. But yeah, everything's, uh, everything's taken over. So we'll just, uh, we'll pop into the, into the low tunnel, and I'll just show you how we're going on with what the stock leaks for now. Okay. Right, well here we are again. As I say, our, um, I spent a good couple of hours uh, the other day just uh, cleaning the vine down. As, as I say, it's, um, it starts from the main stem there and uh, it runs runs all the way up, round. And where I took the cuttings from at the end there, at the end of the, of this year's growth, I took it back by about a good third. And uh, that's the... Um, that's stuff, this is the stuff I use for the, the cutting material. Uh, there's a couple of croissants left there, and I'm just waiting for them to flower. I've ha had a bit of problem with some of the markers this year. I, for some reason, one or two of them got um, got mixed up. But um, I'm going to let them flower, and uh, just to make sure the right markers are on them. And then next week, what I tend to do is to start emptying out the buckets, uh, cleaning out the combs, or cleaning out the stools, cut them back, and then we'll, we'll do a little video on that because I'm going to add a couple of dahlias, take a couple of dahlias up at the same time, and we'll, uh, we'll get a video on that. But as I say, um, these are marked with John Wingfield. Now I didn't get any flowers from the John Wingfield this year. Um, they got really a bad infection of the um, leaf miner. They're still pretty poorly. Um, I've given them another rhubarb spray and I'm just going to leave them because uh, the growth on the bottom is pretty healthy there so all I'm going to do is to take them out of the pots next week I'm going to strip them right back uh, get, the, get the roots, get the stools a good cleaning a bit of just fluid and some water or just some um, just some sterilising fluid uh, cut the tops right back just with a basic stool and then pop them up with some nice fresh compost and hopefully next year, once it starts going away, I'll get some nice, clean, fresh growth of them, and that'll do for plants for next year. So I've just sent it for a couple of catalogs up there. I've actually got another one this morning from um, Choice Plants of South Shields. And I've got some fantastic um, dahlias. I've been promised a few dahlias from a, a, a lot of lads. Uh, some new chrysanthemums, which I intend to grow next year. But the only, the only problem is I've got to start sorting out a bit of land for them. I've got my leeks sorted out, my leek trench, I've got my onions sorted out, I've got my plants leeks sorted out. Uh, there's, there's quite a few things, if you're, if you're going to enter the shows, you know you need uh, quite a bit of space, but what I do want to do is take up too much room in the allotment. I still want to carry on with my veg, because uh, as I say, we're, we're like all our fresh veg from the garden, so I don't really start taking up too much room. So I'm trying to utilise as much space that, would, that we haven't used for the show. Um, one of the jobs I've been doing this week is trying to keep me, trying to get the leaks nice and clean. Um, I started off here that day, uh, and of course these are these are the big leaks from the from the leak shows. Uh, I managed to get a couple of these up for a couple of lads. I'll just put them to one side for a moment, um, and all here. All they're rooted in is a good uh, multi purpose and plenty of sharp sand. And we're just give them a good spray. Because what I was finding is uh, a lot of dieback on the outer flags. So I've been easing them up and trying to keep them nice and dry, nice and fresh. Uh, and hopefully we'll get a nice leak head from that one next year. Now, the leaks I've got down home at the moment, um, I've got two leak heads. <coughs> <coughs> I've got two leakers from one of my friends, and as I say, I stripped them well back. A little bit of this in the water. Yeah, soaked the, the leakers overnight, give them a good shake, and all the pips, all the, all the grass just fell away. Lovely. Nice and clean, and of course, the bleach the the sterilised at the same time. So, this is the idea of these leaks. This will flower again next year, and what we'll do, we'll trim the head back, but. Uh, We'll take it month by month, um, and we'll just uh, we'll, we'll show you how we'll go on. We're doing exactly the same with the garlic. I put three garlic in, into seed, 
um, in the big pots. So we'll do exactly the same there and we'll have our leeks, we'll have the garlic and of course I've got a big plant sheet down there. So all these are going to be set away to seed. But the overwinter is up in the polytunnel here. Yeah? We've we'll just put the, the lower skin on uh, because we had these nets on all, all year. We've we'll just put a lower skin on. We'll remove the back one because um, that's well sheltered on that side. So we'll get a little bit of fresh air coming through that way. Um, the air tomorrow is going to go into here next year, but by then the spring cabbage will be well clear. Uh, these are quite quite happy sitting in here in a cold tower, um, and hopefully we'll get a nice seed head of them. We'll probably put these outside in about March, April time. Yeah. Once we get the stock on them, we'll get them tidy in, get them secured in a couple of nice cans, and then we'll, uh, we'll put them outside then. Well, thank you. And there's the rain coming down again. I'm quite happy to just let them sit there, sit at them out in here. That rain is starting to get a, a bit of a, a nuisance now. I've had a couple of soapings today, but uh, not to worry. Right, so as I say, that's for spring cabbage in. Uh, Roger's just been up and down the roads today, doing a bit of weeding. Now in the bottom tanks, uh, we've got the um, we've got the nettle juice in there. So what we'll do with the cabbages are taking the feed out of the soil, they're not suffering at all now. So I think I'm going to wait until about December time, when they start hardening up, December, January, and then I'm going to start giving them a, a, a small feed once a week of the nettle juice. Uh, mix it around about the 50-50 and uh, we'll, see a, we'll see a big difference in them. Uh, as I say, for the moment, I was going to take a walk around the garden, but um, I think I'll leave that until the next video. So I'm going to pop down now and we'll, uh, we'll have just have a little look in uh, the home greenhouse and I'll show you what, how we're getting on with colleagues down there and what, how to set them away. Okay, see you soon. Right, well here we are back home again and uh, still no change in the weather. Fortunately, still pouring down. But uh, just Typical northeast weather, I'm afraid. So, uh, yeah, back down home, yeah, it's uh, compact and bijou, and uh, this is where I do most of me, me planting. Uh, at the moment, the leeks are away. As I say, I'm entering back into the shows again next year, so as me, uh, me start as for 10. That's uh, some nice, um, off one of my friends, I've got a couple of leak heads, like I say, I showed you the leak heads yesterday, yeah, the big leaks up the allotment, and what we'll do this year, we'll set them away to seed. Now I've got two seed heads just a couple of weeks ago, and uh, put them in a bit bleach and some water, in a good shape, and got all the pods, all the grass off them, and uh, this is a result, and not really healthy, so well pleased with them. I've got a couple of dozen of each. There's a good tray of the shore leaks. Uh, I always like to use plastic trays. As I've said in an earlier video, I do all my water from underneath. So everything gets water from underneath. Just water into the trays and let the plants soak it up and I find that much easier. The only time I'll spray is if I have to put a small bit of feed on them um, and just uh, spray them if it gets too warm. Just give them a light dousing and uh, keep them nice and healthy. But apart from that, I'm well pleased with that. I've grown away, they're in multi-purpose multi, uh, compost, plenty of sharp grit to make a nice free drain and mixture and uh, as I say they're in there now and they'll stop in there for another couple of weeks before I start potting them off then of course in your own compost, but I've showed you how, how we like to make ours so we'll be making a couple of mixes up within the next couple of weeks and we'll get started on it Right, so what we've got on here I've done all the electrics last week uh, the heat bed, which is uh, will come into use in the next couple of weeks, and of course the heat lamp. Uh, I'd like to use a heat lamp through the day, but nothing else, no heating. I've got enough heat from there just to keep it at a steady temperature around about 50-55, which I'm quite happy with. Uh, over the last couple of mornings I've been down and checking. Uh, first thing in the morning, 6 o'clock, half past 6 and it's a good 45 to 50, so I'm quite happy with that, it's no heat on at all, just let them tip over 
nice and slowly. The heat lamp I like to use in the winter months, um, come December time, we're facing south. Unfortunately, I've got the houses in front of us, uh, so I don't get any sunshine whatsoever. Once uh, after this month, I'll lose the sun completely until about the end of February, begin of March next year, when it comes back over the roofs again. So, my idea is to put the lamp on at least 12 hours a day, and it gives the uh, gives the leaks all the all the light that I need, and keep them ticking over until about this uh, January, February, and then I'll go up the allotment. So uh, there'll be a little bit of heat on up there, but uh, not too much. It'll just keep them uh, ticking over quite quite there uh, quite easily. Um, water. The I main thing, as I've said in a couple of my previous videos, I like to use plenty of fresh water straight from the tap, nice and clean, uh, not from the barrels, because as you know, when it's been lying for a couple of weeks, we tend to get all sorts of uh, pest diseases, alkaline um, pathogens lying in the water, algae, and of course spreading them under a warm compost it's uh, not going to do them any good, they'll just spread like welfare so what I like to do is to fill a water can up from the top, bring it up back into the greenhouse, let it come up the temperature and then use it accordingly don't use much water in India, as I say the leaks are at this stage now it just keeps them up, the compost just moist, that's all a little bit of a spray and uh, they're quite happy just ticking over and then that's about it. Um, the next thing I'll get going in here is the onions, the show onions. Well, they'll go in um, when the solstice comes around. It's about 20th of December. Uh, I'll show my onions um, and by the time they come through, early January, we should start getting more light back again. So hopefully they'll grow away quite easy. But uh, yep, we're all ready. As I say, um, we've seen all this. We've Seen all the show leaks yesterday, all the uh, the stock leaks, the are in, <coughs> and hopefully we'll get some nice heads for next year. I only wish I had kept the um, the seedling heads that I had last week, just to show you on the video what it's been. Quite a few people have been trying to get um, trying to get heads off. They find it a bit difficult, but uh, if you get about a pint of water, the two pints of water, and put a touch of um, Domestus in it, steep them overnight. Give them a good shake and you find the grass comes off really easy. And uh, this is how I've dealt with mine. But as I say, they're well away there now. I'm well pleased with them. I'll just let them tip over for the next couple of weeks. And then I'll start potting them off probably about the end of October into November. And my own, uh, our own potting mixes. And, uh, and they'll gallop away then. Just keeping them nice and slowly. Not too much heat. Um, if any at all. Just plenty of fresh air. Uh, I like to open the vents. I like to keep the doors open. Uh, especially when the, on a nice warm day like today, it's come down, open the door, and let the fresh air in through. And uh, with the door open, it's still reading 64 in here, so that's, that's quite ample. Um, I don't want to give a, I don't want to force them at all, just let them tick away nice and slowly. But uh, as I say, you can, they're quite easy to grow. Um, I am entering the shows next year again, as I say. Uh, so I've got my leeks, I've got my show leeks, and I've got um, some good blanch leeks here that I've started on. Uh, next thing to do is to, to get some nice stock of croissants. I've got my own croissants, but uh, I'm going to invest in some nice new stock. I'll get some new catalogs. So I've been looking through them to see which is the best um, the best deals around. So, and of course the dahlias. Well, I've been promised lots of dahlias from different people. Um, I'll be entering the shows with the dahlias, um, gladioli, croissants, uh, and of course all the vegetables, and potlicks and um, intermediates and blanch leeks. So I've got a quite a busy year ahead of us. So I'm gonna shut up for now, get a couple of bits of uh, couple more compost made up, ready for next week, the week after, ready for start potting up. And uh, it's gonna keep up pretty busy because we've got the beds and all that up here. We've been up buying some trench mix and some uh, white polythene to lay under the leaks. So we've got a lot to get started on next. But uh, that's the job in the next couple of weeks. We'll be doing a couple more videos soon. I'm going to start on the croissants next week, get them um, empty out of pots, stripped down and potted up. Uh, so that's the next video. But um, yeah, until then, thanks for watching, and we'll see you all again soon. Okay, bye for now.